Steve, and we're going to discuss this week's game against the Los Angeles Chargers. So, as always, we're going to do good, bad, and ugly. So, I'm going to start this time with the good. And I didn't have a lot of hopes, wasn't really sure, but I think Stidham actually did a pretty decent game. And maybe starting these last two games is a good idea because he's playing against teams that aren't up to 100%. He's not going to be playing against playoff teams and stuff. So we might actually see some good stuff out of him. What do you guys think about Stidham? I think it's, it, you know, I, it remains to be seen what Stidham's going to be. Um, I suspect he'll get a chance to compete for the, the lead role next season. Uh, but what I kind of took away from it was, the offense didn't look that different under Stidham than it did under Wilson. And he cost five million instead of, you know, fifty million. So that's a, a striking difference. Uh, I don't know what you think, Don. Um, you know, he played well. He played mistake free ball for the most part. Um uh I but you know, he's not he's not going to take us to the Super Bowl. <laughs> no. Is he? <laughs> no, not at this point. Not. I don't think he, no, be, he doesn't know this. Yeah, so, but I will. I will say my good is um, sort of in line with that. Is you know what? It, the, watching the game was a good time, and I think it actually was fairly important for us to win this game, even though it was a quote unquote meaningless. But I think that if after everything we'd gone through this week, Sitton had come out and played poorly, or we had gotten blown out, I think. There'd be some real serious despondency. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. the team is a mess, but um, there are some highlights. You know, the the Humphrey touchdown uh, pass, oh, yards yeah. after catch. That was you know one of the funnest gate plays, honestly, that we've had uh, as Broncos. You know, um, certainly Corton's made a lot of big catches this year, but that sort of exciting uh, surprise me uh, yards after catch was very fun. Um, and you know they they uh, figured out the the fake uh, uh, punt and they blocked a field goal and so there were you know it was a good time and I, I genuinely after getting over my that frustration of everything how everything has gone since we went on the field to New England I had a good time and at this point that's all we can ask for. No. Yeah, and I have to say like I think that it was interesting to see how the offensive line played the, in this game versus previous games. You know, it made me feel a little bit better about, you know, what we invested in Ben Powers and uh, Michael Glenchy, um, or I suppose Cameron Fleming for much of that game. But, uh, you know, maybe that our offensive line looks a little bit better under a different style of quarterback play. Um, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Yeah, because I do think Stidham, he is more pocket and he was getting the ball out a lot faster because I do think he is a little bit better at some of those short yardage throws. So that does help the offensive line because they're not having to keep contained for so long. Um, yeah. I agree with Todd, like everything that's happened with um, Ross, which I will bring up, bring that back up later in our show. Um, it was kind of like you said, Todd. Yeah, it was. I, I really wanted us to win this game too, because it was, I thought it was very important for our team morale. And it shows in like what Steve said too. Also, it wasn't a system. It's the same system. It's just was with a different person. So 
I don't know. Uh, I'll have to. The my my answer is still out on Sean Payton <laughs> a mm -hmm. little bit. So, okay, leading into the bad, um, Steve, why don't you start with that? Yeah. So I already kind of alluded to it, but in fact, I think the fact that the offense looked roughly the same. I mean, if you look at the numbers, almost exactly the same between our yeah. you know fifty million dollar quarterback and our five million dollar quarterback. Uh, that's not great. Um, you know, obviously it's one game, you know, it's hard to make a direct comparison in that limited sample, but, um, you know, and I don't think Stidham is leading us to the promised land or anything, but, uh, yeah, it's not, not, not a good look for Wilson ultimately. Todd. So, um, I, th I think the bad is Jerry Judy. I, I think, you know, I think this week I've given up on him. Um, uh, he has, you know, Hey, I love wide receiver prima donnas. Uh, the best ones are, and they always want the ball. <laughs> um, but you know, he's uh, Judy can't find chemistry with anybody. Um, and you can you look at it. I mean, he's been with, is this, is this his fourth year already? I think it's, it's I mean, he was injured one year, but I think he's a four year pro and I can't remember. And he's played with what eight quarterbacks. He's never developed chemistry with any of them. Um, and it's always the quarterback's fault. So uh, maybe so there's some trade value for him. Um, I was a big fan for a long time because I think he has the best cut skills I've ever seen. Um, but he never he can cut, but he's never where he's supposed to be. And so um, uh, I think it's time to uh, move on from the the Judy show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the man can make people fall out of their shoes, essentially. It does no good if you can't get the ball. And or you can't catch the ball when it gets there. Right. Yeah, he just, there's something wrong with him. So, okay, my bad is about the game coming up. I don't know if you guys <laughs> have seen the injury report this week. <laughs> Manhurts is out. So, Manhurts, McGlinchey, I always, I'm going to say Samaje because I can never remember how to say <laughs> his name correctly. And um, Delaire and Turner yell. They all did not practice today. Though that doesn't mean that they won't practice the end of this week. But still, but Turner yell, they're, they're saying he has an ACL injury. So he's yeah, probably he's out for the rest he's, of the season. He's, he's on IR, Tina. He's done. Yeah. Yeah. McGlinchey, I don't care about. Let him leave for a game. <laughs> um, but Barrett Browning, Baron Browning has a concussion. Josie Jewell has a back injury. Mim and Sutton are out with hamstring and concussion, but they did practice limited today. So maybe George Cortland will be back. If I was one of those guys, I'd be like, unless I absolutely have to play, I'm not coming yeah. back in uh, for uh, one yeah. game. You know, make sure you take yeah. care of yourselves. We're going to need them next yeah. season. I've got no yeah. problem with that. So... I think this game is going to be interesting because, I mean, let's be honest, Pierce has done a damn good job with that Raiders team and kind of turned them around a bit. I think they're the same level as us in terms of overall strength of team, but they have flashes. So I want to win on Sunday, but I think this is going to be, a, going to be an interesting game. I don't know about you guys. So I, I will be at is. the game. Uh, and so I'm don't hoping that it me. is not embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tina, Tina's down with the Rona, so she cannot make the Raiders game. Oh, I'm I am yeah. not yeah. happy, Todd. Because <laughs> I wanted to go to that game so badly. Uh, and my go, mom. Let's go when it matters, Tina. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll I know. <laughs> So the whole point of this weekend was it's part of my mom's birthday present. So she's going, it was her first game. Steve was going to go. Jenny was going to go. It was going to be a family thing. So, and then when the prices started falling and they weren't the obnoxious $400 they were in those bleeds, I was like, oh, yay. And then I get the Rona. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm done. Okay. All right. And speaking of the Rona and things that are ugly. <laughs> Let's talk about what was ugly, Dot. So I think uh, I think what I would say is ugly um, 
is the last eight years of missed opportunities in so many ways. Um, you know, ten, so ten years ago is when we made made our first Super Bowl run. Again, lost to Russell Wilson in Seattle. You know, the glorious Super Bowl win two years later. But I think if you just look at the last eight years, it's just every single major decision we've made has been wrong. Um, and uh, it's just you know. You don't, you don't get these years back. Like we, we, we have, we're, we've been bad for nearly a decade now. That's a long time to be a bad football team. Um, and, you know, there's uh, it, you know, Joe Flacco is going to the playoffs. I, 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 I am honest about this. I was thinking this week, I literally cannot remember a game Joe Flacco played. Did he start or did, did what happened? Was he injured in the first month or did he get benched by Drew? But like, I don't have any recollection. He got of benched. He within got benched. Three, four weeks, right? Yeah. Like he barely made yeah. it a month and he got benched. It was like, he just didn't care. If Drew yeah. Locke, the rookie can beat you, he didn't care. Yeah. So, and that's, that for me, the thing about Joe Flacco, for me, that kills me because I want Cleveland to do well. I don't want him to do well. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, at a certain point, it, speak, it speaks to the organization, not to the yeah. player. And that's, yeah, and I think that's I what's know. Really, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, I wanted, you know, uh, we have a friend. Uh, he's talking about how it's going to be an off, exciting off season. I am very tired of exciting Broncos off seasons. I want stability. I prefer exciting seasons. <laughs> yeah, I, want, I want stability. I want I want all the all the good players we know are going to be on the field to be at home working out and trying to figure out, you know, how to get to the playoffs. I don't I don't like yeah. going in not knowing if half the team is still going to be on the roster. So Yeah, and I think that's a definite possibility cuz I think Sean is going to do a hatchet job through the team. So but that's also going to be tied to what kind of draft picks do we have? What can we afford in terms of the cap? Because we all know we don't have cap space. <laughs> Russell's taking that cap space with whatever bench he's going to be on. <laughs> so, all right, Steve, what's your ugly? Uh, my ugly is uh, spending more draft capital on trying to solve the quarterback problem. Because, uh, you know, we're going to be middle of the first round. If we're looking to get a Penix or, you know, whoever else, we're going to have to trade up almost certainly. Um, and so, you know, okay, we've spent how many picks on on uh, Wilson, how many on Peyton. Now we're going to do that too. And if you look at our roster, how much better would this team be with those draft picks as players rather than burn capital to get somebody new to come in? And so, yeah, you know, hey, if we get the quarterback, and we have a few years to build around them. Great, but you know, I wait. I wait to see how it plays out. Uh, the last few years have not left me particularly optimistic on that. I'll still show up and watch. I still enjoy mm -hmm. watching. But holy cow, can we can we get this right? Well, mm -hmm. and, then, and you know that's why the last month has been so absolutely discouraging, because the whole idea of trading for Wilson and Peyton was so that we weren't in this situation anymore. And I think that's mm -hmm. why this season, this off season feels worse because like this was the guarantee that we would not have to worry about our head coach and we would not have to worry about our quarterback. And honestly, you know, both could go and we'd be at the same place that we are right now. So um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough uh, orange winter for us. And hopefully it takes yeah. two or three seasons instead of another five or seven. Yeah. Cause I mean, honestly, if the, Bears do what I think they would do, which is they're going to turn that number one draft pick into a draft capital like nobody's business. And it, it's they're going to set what you're going to have to give up in order to get a first round draft for one of those quarterbacks. So, I mean, I kind of want them to do that because at least like, hey, we can, you know, maybe trade up and make it like this is our guy and go for it. But like at the same time, like, I feel like they know Fields has its ceiling and they're better off going with somebody new. So, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, I, I, to, the, I just, I tape, just think the, the Bears are going to take Caleb Williams unless he refuses to play with them. It, it would be insane yeah. to watch. He's going to be a 15 year uh, alt pro. Um, he might not want to play for Chicago, but, um, you know, uh, they can get draft, they can get draft capital for Justin Fields too. I think Caleb's coming mm -hmm. to Chicago if he wants to. 
Yeah, well, we'll see what happens with that one. I just think that if they don't take Caleb Williams and they keep Fields at least for one year, year because he is under his rookie contract, they're going to turn that first round draft pick into draft capital bonanza. And that's just going to ratchet it up as far as what you're going to need to be get down to the lower levels of the first round to get these guys, these quarterbacks that some people think we should pick up. And we don't have that kind of draft capital to give up. That's my issue with that. So I I don't know if that solves our problem or not. Well, right. I, I, and just real quick, I think we sort of do. We have, we have draft capital. Um, the Russell Wilson, like we lost the second rounder for, or we, or we gave up a first rounder for Peyton, but I don't. I think we have all our draft picks next year, this year, and moving forward. We gave up a we bunch of second and thirds. We did. We don't yeah. have our second. I think we have. We have yeah. the rest, but we, there's like one people missing because of the Sean Payton trade. Yeah. So I mean, definitely the best we've had in a few years for sure. Yeah, but I mean, we you know we can we can trade two first round draft picks for Caleb if we wanted to. But again, then we're back in the problem that we're already in, where we're trading away our top draft picks yeah. when we need them. That's my problem with the idea that we have to go out and get one of these quarterbacks or something or I mean great if we get them when we it, it when we're supposed to be picking I'm okay with that but trading away this draft capital again to stick us back in a situation I just that's what I don't agree with but I'm not one on I don't follow college football that much and all of that mm -hmm. so I'm gonna sit there and listen to some of you guys talk about that all right I'm gonna talk about my ugly and the reason I'm gonna call this ugly is I think this is going to turn ugly, is um, the NFLPA has released a statement that they are going to be um, cert, um, investigating whether or not they're going to sue the NFL and the Denver Broncos for the benching of Russell Wilson to make sure that his injury guarantee doesn't go into effect. And I think this is going to turn ugly. And I think it's going to be, it's going to end up, they're saying it's a violation of the CBA. And I looked at it and I think they have a case. I really do think they have a strong case for this. So I think this might be one of those where they want to make sure no other team attempts this. Right. Because if they, if the, if the, if the NFLPA allowed teams, the, Broncos to do this, every team is going to do this. They're if they're not in a winning season or they're not in a playoff, they're going to bench their guy that has an injury guarantee just to make sure an injury doesn't happen. So, I think this is going to turn ugly. So I, we'll I, just I see what un, happens. I, this is an unusual situation, but I do think that the NFL because I, I don't you know I it's, it's a hard case to make that say that they're doing anything wrong if. Um, you don't have to play any player for any reason, but I but I think what the NFLPA is concerned with is this is a precedent setting issue, and so they're mm -hmm. going to fight it hard. But you know we are just in this really sort of unenviable position of having a two hundred fifty million dollar sixty thirty six year old quarterback who's just simply not very good, and it's not going. This is not going to happen regularly. Um, you know most people are going to want their fifty million dollar quarterbacks on the field. In, in the middle right. of the season, regardless of what the record is, um, this is right. just you know a mess. It's it's an absolute mess. It's uh, I, um, I think I, I think you look across any sport, and this is probably one of the most screwed up situations a professional franchise has been in. You might even say it's ugly. You might say it's ugly. <laughs> it's, it's so ugly. I don't want us on hard knocks. I like <laughs> Sean's talking about he wants hard knocks to come on to prove him right and everything. I'm like, shut up. No, we don't want cameras in there. I want to be on hard knocks just because I want to watch more Broncos stuff, but I get it. <laughs> if it was anything, if let's say it's a year later from now, I'm okay with it. This stuff with some of the stuff that's going on, I I just I have a really bad feeling but you know what we'll see what happens okay um that's what i have for broncos mile high minute any last minute thoughts any anything you guys want to say 
let's let's uh, finish above five hundred. Yeah. Let's Anybody? let's beat the Raiders. I think Always you know. <laughs> I think the strangest thing about right now is if you said at the beginning of the season that um, Denver Broncos are going to be finished nine and eight and be knocked out of the playoffs in late December, we'd say, okay, this is a good, we're moving forward. This is a good building block, but mm -hmm. we can't even have forward progress without uh, getting a flag and being thrown backwards. Yeah. yeah. Two steps forward, three steps back situation. Yeah. That's how it's been for like 10 years. So, yeah. all right. Well, Todd, depending on how I feel, I will be there on Sunday. Okay. Let's make the plug. The Almost home tavern. Yeah. Yes. We will be at Almost Home Tavern in Wrigley Field for any of you that have Bronco fans or know any Bronco fans, want to come and join us, or if you just want to come and join us at the at the bar, it's always a good time, let me tell you. It's always an interesting when new people see our, our incomplete chant. It's always kind of a... <laughs> we do it right. But, yep, we do it right. All right, guys. Good talking to you, and go Broncos. Let's get those pesky little Raiders and start out on a good note for next year all right guys. go broncos go broncos